everyone, and welcome to episode four of the Nitty Heather podcast. My name is Heather, and I'm coming to you from Kent, Washington, where I live with my husband and our Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Pepper. This is my podcast where I talk about all my knitting and yarn and everything I learn along the way throughout working on my knitting projects, and I just love sharing and building a community with everyone. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I'm glad you found me. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad to spend some time with you today. If you would like to follow me on Instagram, I am at Nitty Heather. I would love to connect with you there. And anything I talk about as far as patterns or designers or yarns will be down in the description bar below. Today is Saturday, June 6th, 2020, and I've got a lot to tell you about today, so let's get started. Today I am wearing my Squiggles cowl by Joe Cottle. This is a two-color brioche cowl, and I had the pleasure of taking a class last November with her and Pamela, one of the other lovely gals, at the Serial Knitters yarn shop in Kirkland, Washington. And I was able to take a class and, and learn how to do brioche and how to do this pattern. I had done a little bit of two color brioche just straight back and forth on a scarf before, but this is the first time that I had ever done it with increases and decreases and then in the round. So I absolutely love this. I think it's a stunningly beautiful design. It looks equally beautiful with kind of this pinky color showing as it does with more of the purple. The yarn I used is Dye House, their in-house yarn line at Serial Knitters. The purpley color is called Deep Relaxation and then this peachy pink color is a one of a kind. And I just kind of, I came to the class not really having an idea in my head of what colors I wanted and they both just kind of spoke to me. So I'm really pleased this was such a fun knit. Joe has all kinds of other really beautiful patterns out on Ravelry, so definitely check her out. Today I am also wearing one of the first pairs of self-striping socks I ever knit. This is just a plain vanilla sock with a German short row toe and heel, and the yarn is Knit Picks Felici in the colorway Ever After. The first thing I'd like to talk about today is actually a brand new experience I had dyeing yarn with Kool-Aid. I got some just bare undyed yarn through Dyer Supplier from Knit Crate and they sent along some packets of Kool-Aid to dye it with. And I followed the tutorials from Rebecca of Chem Knits. She has all kinds of wonderful inspiration and very informative instructional videos. I was actually super shocked at how well it worked. Not saying I'm gonna become a yarn dyer. I certainly would never do it with <laughs> real dyes. I was able to use just my normal kitchen pots because it was just Kool-Aid, so it was totally food safe. But it was a lot of fun. I sort of documented it along the way, so I'm gonna cut now to some footage of that experience. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to my little dyeing experiment. I have two skeins of undyed yarn from Knit Crate, and here's my plan. So first with this one, I'm going to dip dye with grape and try to create like a nice purple ombre effect where it's super saturated and dark on one side and lighter at the other end. And then my next attempt will be to kind of wash this skein with this orange Kool-Aid and then use this red cherry color for speckles. So we'll see how that goes. Wish me luck. Thank you. 
All right, guys, and here is the final product. I'm actually quite pleased with how it turned out. I was amazed at how quickly the yarn absorbed all of that Kool-Aid. It looks awesome. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's dry. Okay guys, so here's how my second skein turned out with the red speckles. Now it's time to take them outside and let them dry so I can put them in a nice tidy hank. I hope you enjoyed that little adventure dyeing yarn. Here is how they look in the actual hanks. I did the best I could to wind. I'm not the best at twisting these into hanks and I'm a little bit scared. You can see I kept the zip tie just because when I wind this I'm a little bit afraid that it's going to be a huge mess. But I'm, I've got my fingers crossed. I might wind these into a cake sooner rather than later just so that I don't have to worry about it becoming a tangled mess and it can just be done and when I want to actually knit with these they'll be ready. But this is my orange with the red speckles and then kind of the ombre faded grape purple color. <laughs> Now I would love to tell you about my FOs since last time we talked. The first one is my Workday Scarf by Sue Flanders. Kind of show the ruffly edge. I also did a slip stitch edge where I slipped the first stitch purl wise and then moved the yarn in back to continue knitting. And I just love how this turned out. It, even though I increased, the speckles are perfectly evenly distributed. This yarn was beautifully dyed. This is from another one of my local yarn stores. This is from A Little Nitty and it's their diamond base in the colorway Where You Lead, I Will Follow. And I think I am gonna give this to my mom I think she would look really pretty in this. And I love it. I think it's very wearable. This is 
a scarf that you can make a hundred different times with a hundred different yarns and just have a really good extra little piece to add to whatever outfit. So Workday Scarf by Sue Flanders. My next one is my Into the Bloom Cowl by Addison Volner. I did not talk about this one last time, but I finished it. And I absolutely think these colors faded so nicely. These are her February Advent minis that she sent out. And I started up here with the darker blue and ended with this green. And as you can kind of see, she has you increase every few rounds, so it kind of is a little narrower at the top and then wider at the bottom so that each color of the yarn can really shine. And I think that's a really nice design technique, a design element that she did. This stitch pattern is really, really fun, and it had a nice I-cord bind off. Now, I-cord bind offs, they definitely go very slowly but they are totally worth the effort because it's just so nice and clean and it doesn't pull or tug, it's not tight when you put it back over your neck. I really am very happy with this. The Into the Bloom Cowl by Addison Volner of Ruby and Roses Yarn with her February Advent Minis. She really is quite the queen of minis. She has all kinds of wonderful mini sets in her Etsy shop and she does an excellent job dyeing with speckles in particular, I feel like is her strength. Okay, and then I was also able to finish four pairs of socks. This first one is my Must Stash Vespa socks. The pattern I used was the Go Your Own Way socks, Top Down by Stacy Winkleplek with a heel flap and gusset. Super bright and fun. Very pretty, vibrant colors. My next one is Spring Love by Hypnotic Yarn from her last Yarnable box. And this one I did Hermione's Everyday Sock by Erica Luter. And this was just a really beautiful pattern. Love this yarn base. This is an 8515 and it is so soft. It's called her plush sock and it's so soft. I really, these are going to be so warm and cozy to wear. Next up is my cozy knitter from last month. This is the colorway Hippity Hop. I did just a vanilla sock with a fish lips kiss heel in this coordinating green mini. And then last up, I did want to talk a little bit about, so these are my made Desert Vista Dye Work socks in the colorway West Side Story. I did the pinstripe socks by Julia Swart, but I need to tell you about a little bit of a mistake that I made. And I'm always going to be open with you guys about anything I mess up on because that's how we all learn, right? And the sad thing is I didn't even realize I did this until I was literally trying them on. And I said, oh, that was silly. So you do these columns of slip stitches down the leg, perfectly fine, but then you're only supposed to do it across the top of the foot. You don't usually want to put a pattern at the bottom of your foot, right? Well, I was just, and I think it was because I was doing this afterthought heel, I just was kept going and going, making the tubes. <laughs> and I kept doing the pattern all the way around the bottom of the foot instead of just leaving the bottom plain stockinette. Oops, live and learn. At least this is not like such a crazy pattern that it's uncomfortable. I did try them on and they, they fit fine. Um, it doesn't bother me, but it's just kind of one of those, like, what was I thinking moves? Please comment below. I'd love to hear about any other knitting mistakes you have made. Really happy with all those. Super thrilled to have a couple more socks in the drawer. And I will show you coming up next what my sock whips are now. <laughs> So my first sock whip is in an awesome Wizard of Oz bag 
by Donna of Donna's Design Shop. Thank you so much, Donna. She has an, a really lovely shop on Etsy. These are my June Desert Vista Dye Work socks. This is the colorway Zombodies, not in Kansas anymore, hence the Wizard of Oz bag. I actually cast these on in honor of Judy Garland's birthday month. Uh, she is one of my absolute favorite actresses and singers, and I grew up, ask anybody who knew me when I was little, I was obsessed with The Wizard of Oz. So I'm really excited to cast these on. This is the library sock pattern by the Kitchen Sink Shop. A very nice texture on the front. And then I, I'm only doing it on the front. I am keeping the back just plain stock in it so you can really see all these cool stripes. So Susan of Desert Vista Dye Works, one of her absolute strengths is making these cool speckled zombie, zombody stripes. And I just think these are so fun. My pizza progress keeper is from Sucre Sucre Miniatures. I'm doing these two at a time. This is a cuff down pattern. And I'm making quite a bit of good progress. I've got a little bit more left to do on the leg. And then I think she does have you do kind of a heel flap and gusset. And then continue the pattern down the foot. So I'm really excited about these. This is the library socks by the Kitchen Sink Shop using Desert Vista Dye Works. Zombodies not in Kansas in honor of Miss Judy Garland's birthday month. Did anybody see that movie? I think that was the last movie I saw last fall in the movie theater and I really liked it. She definitely had a very very sad hard life though. Um, really quite a shame. She was so incredibly talented. My next sock whip is from the Cozy Knitters Yarn of the Month Club. This is called French Macaroon. And is that not perfect with all the pretty macaroon colors? I'm using a different Ladybug Cupcake Progress Keeper on this one from Simply Serving. I thought it matched these socks perfectly. I really, really love, especially this minty green color. I mean, aren't these the perfect macaroon colors, strawberry, chocolate, vanilla, lemon. And I really love this pretty strawberry pink that she has for the toes, heels, and cuffs. My plan for these, I'm gonna probably just do another vanilla sock with a fish lips kiss heel. I really just love that pattern with this yarn. So again, this is French macaroon and couldn't you almost just eat this yarn? It's so deliciously beautiful from the Cozy Knitter. Next up is my last monthly sock that I tried to do from Yarnable by Hypnotic Yarn. This is called Sandcastle and can't you just, I mean this is a perfect sandy color with the different colors of blues for the oceans and dark brown speckles for different parts of the sand. I just love this color. See if I can zoom in on the pattern. The pattern I am doing is the Times Square Socks by Mina Phillip, the Knitting Expat. It's another one in her New York series of sock patterns and I chose it especially for this month because the last about 10 years Every June my mom and my granny and I have taken a trip to New York and the hotel we stay at is right in Times Square and we just have a wonderful time visiting museums and seeing shows and we're not going this year so this I'm trying to trying to bring a little bit of Times Square it's really just kind of a simple cable twisted stitch pattern really pretty And I think these are gonna turn out to be lovely. I've got a little bit more to do on the foot. These I'm doing toe up. She does, in the pattern, give you an option to do cuff down or toe up. Um, this one I am doing toe up, and I think they're gonna be beautiful. 
did a quick little lighting change here. Last but not least is a new sock cast on. These are the Heel Toe do -si do Socks by Kay Litton, who is the Crazy Sock Lady. And it's just a really fun pattern for self-striping yarn. You kind of end up with this cool zigzaggy pattern with some fun columns of some increases and decreases. I think it's going to be really cool. This yarn is Knit Picks Felici in the colorway Lasso. It's a cuff down pattern. And there's so much fun. It's really addicting to keep wanting to knit and knit round after round on this and just seeing what the stripes do with this cool pattern. This pattern's on the front and then it's plain stock and knit on the back. I've been really into sock patterns that do that for some reason. I like having a little bit of interest on the front of the sock but then being able to kind of pick up some pace on the back with just a stock and knit plain knitting part of the sock. So heel toe, do si do. I'm doing these in tandem and trying to pretty much do about six rounds on one, six rounds on the other. And they're lining up pretty nicely. My last whip is my Spectrum from Hohi Locatelli. Last time I was only about up to here, so I've done a couple more sections. And as you can see, this peachy pink color is getting bigger and bigger. And I only have two more sections left. A really fun asymmetrical, maybe hold it up this way too so you can see, this strawberry cheesecake progress keeper is from Emma Rose of Bluebird Miniatures on Etsy. And the yarns I'm using is the Plucky Knitter, her solo base in the colorway Cecilia and Zen Yarn Garden Charcoal in their super fine fingering. And I just, I love these colors together. And it'll be interesting to see how these next two sections take shape. Hopefully this will be an F.O. next time I podcast. Well, I think that about does it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me. I'm going to try to record about every other week or so, so I look forward to seeing you again very soon. If there's anything you would like to know or see on this podcast, any questions or comments you have, please leave them in a comment below. But until next time, be well, be kind, and happy knitting. I'll see you next time. Bye.